In this video, I want to talk about something called experiential learning. Our textbook mentions this as a great way to create and maintain a student-centered classroom. Four of the examples given in the textbook of experiential learning include role plays, simulations, debates, and presentations. I want to talk about each one of these, uh, tell you, give you some ideas about how I've used them in the classroom, and get you thinking about ways to implement them into your own student-centered classroom. A role play is a classic component of a language classroom, and it's the first thing I think of when I think about experiential learning. A role play is where you give two or more students specific roles and you set them loose to spontaneously interact, uh, given some context and some perhaps some goal. It's a little bit different than a dialogue. A dialogue is written. Um, they're both great, They both, but they practice different skills. A dialogue is written, practices that skill of writing, and it focuses more on correct, perfect written language. Whereas a role play, we're looking for spontaneous interaction, action, reaction, interaction, um, listening, speaking are the main skills being practiced there. Uh, when you do a role play, it's important that you give clear roles, that you set up the context through those roles, and you should probably give an explicit time amount. How long do you expect them to be interacting? Um, it's okay to give them a goal, something you want them to achieve, but you don't want to give them too much direction because you really want this, you want to see where they go with it, and you want it to be as spontaneous as possible for them to practice those real life interactive skills. Some examples of role plays that I've done. Um, the classic is a tourist speaking with a local, um, and that's a great way to practice questions, giving directions, uh, using prepositions of location. Um, another one is a parent and a child, it can be a mom or dad and a, a son or daughter, um, and that creates a clear context, power uh, struggle or power balance right away. Um, and that's a great way to practice modals, you know, you should, must, have to, don't have to. Uh, another one is a police officer or a couple of members of the police with either accused criminals or witnesses of a crime. That's a great way to practice um, past tenses to describe what happened. It's also a great way to pr provide descriptions of settings and descriptions of people, if it's a witness in particular. Um, another one that's really easy and really simple is a teacher and a student, but you flip those around. You let the students, they love to play the teacher. And uh, you as the teacher can sit down and play a student. And letting yourself and the others slip into these roles is a really great way to practice new language and kind of drop the, uh, the affective filter, we call it. Let them be someone else. They're going to be a little bit more open. A simulation is similar to a role play, but it's usually a little bit more extensive and it actually uses, often uses realia to, to really try to simulate a real life situation. Classic example of that is uh, bringing in realia like uh, you know utensils and a glass, maybe a napkin to set up a place setting, and then an authentic menu. And you have students sit around a table and order from a menu, and you have uh, a server, so they get to practice the authentic language of a restaurant. Um, another simulation that I've done with younger learners is to bring in realia, uh, like this kind of fake food, and you set up a market. We set up a market around the classroom. Uh, I had a class of 10-year-old learners in Spain where we, we did. We set up, we had the fruits and we had the vegetables, we had the meats. Uh, and so they had to ask uh, questions about the food that was available, about amounts and about prices. And so that allowed for a lot of interaction, uh, that simulation. Other things that I've done was to set up a town meeting where you give people their roles. We had one where uh, a, a small neighborhood meeting was happening and McDonald's wanted to open a restaurant in the neighborhood and we gave each person a role to say you're a mother of small children, you're a father of small children, you are the pub owner, you are the, uh, the health minister, and you are the minister of finance. And, and they get to have a meeting and talk about, uh, use polite disagreement to talk about their opinions about whether McDonald's should be allowed. Um, I've also done a mock trial. That was for more advanced students, and we were teaching the American justice system where you give them roles of a defendant and a prosecutor and then witnesses, and you have a judge, um, and you can set up the classroom for that. And that's a, that's a great, very interesting simulation. Um, simulations sometimes take longer to set up. They can take many lessons or even weeks. In the case of the mock trial, it took several weeks to set that up, and then it was a, an entire two days uh, of simulation, but it was really great. Another excellent example of experiential learning in a language classroom is a debate. Um, debates are fairly 
clear, the, uh, the fairly easy to set up. Um, they're great for practicing language of formal argumentation and uh, formal agreement and disagreement. Uh, I kind of think of debates as having two general categories, either small scale or large scale. By that I mean small scale would be something you could set up and, and do within an individual lesson, whereas large scale would be something that would require outside research and for, for uh, the groups to have a lot of time to prepare for. Um, you always want to give them time to prepare, whether it's outside of class or within the class. You want to give very clear parameters about the debate. You don't want to just say, go. You want to let them know, um, for example, if there's three people on both sides of the debate, you want to give them time to come up with their three strongest arguments. Let them know that each student will have one minute to present one of those arguments, and there'll be two minutes for rebuttal and questions afterwards. And that way, everyone gets to speak, and you can set expectations for the other side to, uh, to, to present a rebuttal and ask questions about that. Um, topic. The topic is the most important thing with debates. You have to kind of tailor your topics to your group. You, you need to understand that what's controversial in your country is not necessarily controversial in theirs. And you need to judge the dynamic. Are they, are they going to be comfortable talking about controversial topics or about politics? And if they are, that's great. If not, there's a whole lot of lighter topics you can use. You can find those online. Some interesting light topics I've used are things like money can buy happiness, agree or disagree. Um, it's better to be single or it's better to be married. Uh, what's a better pet, cats or dogs? Um, and one interesting one I've done with students is what's more important, the individual or the group? Um, and I've had a lot of great uh, uh, benefits from doing debates in the classroom, students interacting and using formal language to agree and disagree with each other. Another great example of experiential learning is presentations. And that's pretty self-explanatory. You have a student or groups of students take the stage and formally present information to you and the other students. Uh, some advice I would give you if you're going to use presentations is to model, 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 model. Give example presentation um, of what you're looking for, a good one that contains the language you're looking for, the, the, all the aspects of the presentation you're looking for. A great thing to do is create a grading rubric, give those to the learners, and they could get to grade you while you're giving the model. That's a, They love to grade you, and they also uh, will get familiar with how you're going to grade them when they give their presentation. You should try to require active listening. Uh, you don't want, if the students are in front of the class giving a presentation, you don't want the students that are sitting to, to be able to fall asleep. You want to have them uh, take notes or maybe present a, a graphic organizer for them to fill out. Uh, you could also have them grade, give them the rubric and have them grade the students, but just something that requires that they're actively listening to the presentations. I definitely encourage you to use groups. You know, if you have 20 students, it takes a long time for 20 individual students to get up in front of the class. You might need to do that to assess them. You can have them present in groups in front of the class, but you can also break them down into smaller groups for the presentations. You know, uh, four groups of five, we're going to take turns presenting to the smaller group. That's harder for you as a teacher to assess, but it gets a lot more speaking practice done within those presentation groups. Some topics, just ideas for topics, they can present on anything really, but for the lower levels you can have them present uh, about their country or perhaps a tradition from that country. If they're all from the same country you might want to do maybe their hometown or, or their home neighborhood or even their home. Um, they can maybe plan a trip. That's a great way to use the future tense is just choose a location you've never been to and, and actually plan a trip there and then tell us what you will do on that trip. A little bit higher level you can do explaining the details of a process, maybe one of their hobbies, something technical. You could also have them um, present a problem and propose different solutions to the problem. They can also present controversial topics similar to a debate but no, there's no debate happening but they're going to present uh, something that's controversial and then present arguments for both sides of the pros and cons. Um, business students, obviously, they can make a sales pitch. They can create an advertisement for a product, either real or imagined. Those are just some ideas for having students give presentations. Presentations are a great example of experiential learning, and experiential learning is a very important part of any student-centered language classroom. <laughs>